do you think from a macro economic standpoint, do you feel like we're okay? Things are going to be fine because the press make, is always saying, oh, yeah, the economy's humming. I keep, I keep hearing that. I keep hearing that. Meanwhile, I, I know every recruiter I talk to is is hiring less people and people are doing layoffs and uh, every, everything else. And, and so I'm like, okay, well, I don't know. It doesn't seem fine. Or maybe it seems fine on the surface, but I over the in the distance, I see dark clouds. You you know more about this stuff than me. What what do you think from a macro perspective? Where where are we headed with with the economy? So, uh, so I I think to answer that question, it it would help to kind of actually go back a year and look at twenty twenty three. Okay. Which, in my twenty five years of either being in investment banking or private equity, it was the worst year we've seen. And if you you go back and look at what led to that, um, I mean, you know, we've got wars. We were in an inflationary environment, so interest rates were, you know, it was clear that they were going to be raised. Yeah. Um, we ran into a massive dislocation in valuation expectations. Okay. So, uh, you know, funding year over year at the end of third quarter last year was down over 70%. Wow. Um, you know, the M&A markets were drying up. The IPO market, you know, was dead. And I mean, you, you literally, and, and at the same time, you know, our public markets kept moving to all time highs. Our job numbers, yeah. you know, continue to come in strong. So there is this, just this, all right, what, what, what am I missing here? Right. Um, you know, I laugh. It's amazing how simply changing the calendar from 12, 31, 23 to 1, 1, 24 changes everybody's perspective. And I think it was almost as if people were just waiting to get in the new year because, um, you have pent up demand in the markets because of the lack of deals that were done last year. So remember, you know, if you're a fund, you've got a certain amount of time to invest that money, usually three to four years before you start moving into more of a harvesting mentality. So they just lost a year. The other side of it is the companies still need the money. So what's inevitable is that the two have to start to kind of come together and find some middle ground that is acceptable for money to come in at a valuation that, you know, doesn't kill the founders. And that it literally took six to eight months. So a lot of the deals that were getting done toward the end of last year were deals that these funds had been looking at in Q1. Um, so you've got pent up demand. The, the M&A market is, I think, is we could have as big of a year this year as we've seen in some in, in quite some time. And, okay. and it, it's it's driven again just by demand, market share, um, private equity funds. You know, we talked about they have three to four years to invest. They've got a certain amount of time that they need to exit as well because they need to go out and raise another fund. I'm not saying it's right or it makes sense, mm. but that's what happens. So, you know, I think if you look back over history when we had, you know, period, you know, major negative events or, or kind of influences over the market, the best time to be out there putting money to work were in the years immediately following that. It was true after 98, 99, 2000. It was true after 2001. It was true after 2008. Um, it's happened with COVID. And I think in a similar fashion, you're going to see something similar happen. I mean, what I don't know is, and no one can predict how the elections end up impacting everything. The markets historically have been pretty good in pricing in you know, what the ultimate outcome is going to be. But, you know, if there's anything that that hangs over the U.S. market, it's that. If you're over in London, it, it's a much different story. And in, in the Israeli conflict, Russia, Ukraine, it's much closer to them. And that is having much more of an impact on their thoughts on where things go from here. What you described affect us, affected us in a tiny way compared to what you just described right it was the same right we we definitely were down last year as a business tougher year for us than it was in 2022 for sure and it's interesting we uh money money so we 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 have a line of credit that we established at rider flex in case we need it for whatever right um i did not tap into it in 20 2023 i didn't tap into it they called me and said, hey, you're up for renewal. You, you know this, ling this language better than I do. 
we're going to renew your line of credit, whatever, send us your stuff. <clears throat> well, first thing he, he said is, oh, tougher year last year. You're, uh, yeah, we want we want you to to you tap into your line of credit. Of course, they want us to use it. They're trying to get us to use it, right? In fact, they're going to penalize. I'm surprised that they didn't come back and say, hey, not only are we excited, we're going to increase your bond. No, he, no, he decreased it because we were, our revenue went down. So he's like, oh, your revenue went down. So we're going to we're going to decrease the amount. Does that surprise you? Is that not normal? Bit. Yeah, I mean a little bit, um, but I don't know. <laughs> but but anyway, what you know what I found myself doing was, I thought to myself, yeah, I want to have this line of credit in case the shit hits the fan and I need it. But at the same time, I I, I don't want to use it. Isn't this that's weird, right? I don't know. Do most, are most founders look that way? I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. Well, yeah, I mean, look, anytime you're having to fund your business from debt i mean no, no. right it's always it's always a concern but you know, i think yeah. as entrepreneurs i mean I, I i i had to get as creative as i've ever gotten last year with with how we did that i mean it was just it was just brutal um you know i've i've used this i probably used this term last time we were together but you know it, it, being an entrepreneur means that you've got to be willing to jump off the cliff and assume at some point on the way down, the parachute is going to open. <laughs> you have to have the confidence that just whatever you're doing, the parachute is going to open. And, you know, 2023 tested that theory more than any time in my life with how just how awful the markets were. But yep. Yep. but yeah, I mean, I, it, it takes a unique person in mindset to be able to weather something and, you know, Canley, good on you that you didn't tap into it. I mean, yeah. it, it, that takes courage as well. 